welcome back to Free Advice Friday. I'm here with your favorite doctor, Dr. Murphy. And uh, we're answering your questions and we have a lot of really great questions that you guys have submitted this week. And we're going to start with, first question, do any of your weight loss medications contain gluten, dairy, or eggs? No. All right. Next question. <laughs> uh, he's right or wrong. Okay. Do you have a program for such aller allergies? I guess that one doesn't apply because we don't. So uh, the next one, are there protein shakes, um, any kind of protein shake powder mixed with frozen fruit, fresh fruit, any kind of fruit, um, non-sweet almond milk, um, water, whatever it might be that are okay for the diet? You don't need protein shakes. I don't know why people get on this tangent about protein. Protein shakes, whey protein, protein this, protein that. You don't need protein. Unless you're a marathon runner or you're in a bodybuilding thing in competition, you don't need extra protein. Human beings by nature are not carnivores. We don't have the teeth like a dog, like a leopard, like a lion. We don't shred meat, blah, blah, blah. So we're not meat eaters. We're hunter gatherers, grains, okay? You get plenty of protein from other sources, beans, peas, corn, plenty of protein. You don't need to do this whey protein nonsense. And if you're an athletic uh, trainer, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Don't do it. <laughs> How much protein should a person have in a day? You know, honestly, four ounces is fine. That's four ounces of protein. I don't care if it's beef, fish, chicken, pork. If you're from a county down south, possum, raccoon, it doesn't matter, okay? But you can also get it from sources like beans, uh, corn, peas, vegetables, lentils is what they call that. Yeah. Four ounces is more than enough for a human body on an average daily basis. Now, if you're in a hard workout routine, probably need to double that, bump it up to about eight ounces a day. Mm -hmm. You want to pack on the muscles? Well, it's not so much that you're going to pack on the muscles. And yes, you're going to build some muscle, but interesting enough, you're only going to need about 10% out of that eight ounces of protein for muscle replacement. The rest of it is actually burned off in fuel. Oh, okay. Your body uses protein as an energy mm -hmm. source and converts it for energy, we need that to move through space. Mm -hmm. So it's really a, not as much as you think. As a matter of fact, if you study the diets of long distance runners, marathon runners, they actually fill up on carbs mm -hmm. and fats more than protein. They don't need the protein, they need the energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, that answers that question. The next question is how much water should we be drinking oh, in a day? Okay. This is another one of these things. I, if I had a gun, I'd like to shoot myself. The next time somebody says, I need to drink eight glasses of water a day, I told you I need eight glasses of water a day. Okay, well, let's give eight glasses of water to a newborn. They'll drown, okay? Eight ounces of water to somebody weighing 400 pounds, they're gonna die of dehydration. Water is incredibly variable based upon your body weight. You'll drink enough water when your body's full, okay? When your body's full, you know you're drinking enough water. Point is, when it comes to weight loss, I don't care how much water you drink, I care how cold it is when you drink it. That's why crushed ice and everything you drink, it's gonna hit your body at a lower temperature with crushed ice. Your body has to burn calories to heat it up. You are actually exercising drinking crushed ice water. Next question. <laughs> hey, and so probably too, that, that made me think of the idea of a 2,000 calorie diet. Those general guidelines are just that. and. One of the things you talk to your patients about is that things are a little more specific to your body, right? They are. And you know, the, the and I hate to say this too, but those guidelines that came out from the 1950s when we were an industrial society, everybody went to work. We had manual labor tasks. We were working in automotive industries, mining industries. We actually did something. Now, today, what we do is we sit at a desk, work on a computer, and look at a computer screen and answer a phone. You're burning the same amount of calories you do when you sleep. Nothing. So, no, that 2,000 calorie diet on average for an adult, that's out the window. It has to be way lower, probably around 1,000. Yeah, okay. All right, great. Um, all right, the next question is, why does phenamine cause jitters in some people, and is there a way around that? Yes, there is. Phenamine causes, the phenamine's actually not causing the jitters. What is causing the jitters is hypoglycemia. Mm -hmm. And people have often said to me, well, you know, I get hypoglycemia, you know, my, you know, it's terrible, my doctor said it's an awful thing, we need to do something about it. No, it's not. Hypoglycemia is one of the best things that could happen to you, and I'm gonna to explain to you why. When you're hypoglycemic, 
my body at my age, my weight, in this environment, this elevation, this temperature, I'm storing right about 800 calories of sugar. It's in my muscles, it's in my liver in the form of glycogen, which is glucose that's all chained out in big, long sugars. This is all it is. That's my instant energy. When my body runs down to about half of that amount, 50, 50 60%, so where I only have about 300 calories left in my muscles and liver, I am now gonna develop hypoglycemia. I can't release enough sugar to maintain my energy needs. So what happens is I'm sitting down, I'm not doing anything. I start getting a little shaky, get a little confused, breaking out in a sweat, sick to my stomach. That is hypoglycemia. That means low blood sugar. It's not the low blood sugar doing it. It's the effects of it. Your body's going into a state of shock. So your adrenal glands are releasing adrenaline. This is what's giving you the shakes. Low blood sugar doesn't do that. Adrenaline does. If you've ever been in a car wreck or some horrendous, stressful event, you sit there and shake. That's not hypoglycemia. That's adrenaline and that's the same effect. That's what's causing it. When that occurs by not eating from when you take weight loss medications, I want you to pat yourself on the back. You ran out of sugar and you only have one fuel left to burn, fat. Now you're losing mm -hmm. weight. Now to combat it, what you need to do is get up, go for a brisk walk for about 10, 15 minutes, get out of breath, so where you have to get your own heart rate up and your adrenal glands don't do it itself. That's how you get around the effects of that. Mm -hmm. But phenamine itself does not cause shakes. Mm -hmm. The effect of hypoglycemia from the adrenaline release does. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Yes, and, so a lot of people, and a lot of people don't understand that, but you can get the shakes with or without phenamine by not eating. That's because you're sitting around not doing anything. And when you get that, your body just wants to sit, relax, and chill, and like, oh, God, I hope this gets over it. No, I need you to do the opposite of that. I need you to get up and go for a fast walk. Get your own heart rate up so your body doesn't have to do it. And that actually uh, leads me to the next question, which is, is it better to work out in the cold. So if they get up and go for their brisk walk, is it better to work out in colder environments? This is this is this is an awesome question. If you are in Gulf Shores, Alabama and it's 98 degrees going for a walk, I can promise you you're almost only going to burn about 15 calories an hour. If you were to go to Chicago right now where it's five below zero doing the same walk all bundled up but just breathing the cold air you're going to burn about 150 just breathing the cold air. So people are like, I don't want to get outside because it's cold. No, I need you to bundle up. I need you to walk outside when it's cold outside. Bundle up, stay warm. In the summertime, I need you to run because you're not going to burn any calories. Mm -hmm. It's too hot. Majority of the energy you expend is from cold, not from activity. If you Google a map of obesity in the United States, you'll see all the fat people live in the South. And the further we travel north, the thinner we become. Chicago style pizza, that's not low cal, but they're thinner in Chicago than they are here because of the environment. And uh, if you ever had to be in Chicago in the wintertime, like I had to with this idiot, to go rescue a dog <laughs> in December, driving, uh, what, 20 hours back in a blizzard to rescue a uh, English Mastiff, yeah. That was the coldest winter I've ever experienced yeah, in my miserable. life. Yeah, it was incredibly miserable. <laughs> Never want to be in Chicago in the wintertime ever again for the yeah. rest of my life. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, I, I wouldn't I even visit you again <laughs> ever in Chicago in the wintertime again for the rest of my life. So what you're saying is Sylvester Stallone. You go to Chicago, you're out. Yeah, so Sylvester Stallone and Rocky with Yvonne Drago, he was burning a lot of calories. Oh yeah, he lost all that weight from his workout. He was working out in the snow. That's yeah, he, he was in calories. the snow, okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, so uh, the next question, is it better to count calories or do high protein with low carbs okay. and why? Total calories in, total calories burned determines your weight at the end of the day. doesn't matter if it's from protein, fat, or carbs. You know plenty of people out there that have done that, but protein diets, oh, I can't seem to lose the weight. You're taking in too many calories. Total calories in, total calories burned determines your weight. Now, I'm not a big fan of total protein diets for the reasons we described earlier with the meats, but if you want to stick on the protein side of things with the beans and lentils, mm -hmm. lima beans, green beans, things along those lines, fine. Don't really have to have a meat source. I'm not a vegan. I don't really care for meat that much, but it doesn't have to be that way. 
and it doesn't matter, but you have to count those calories. Total calories in, total calories burned. You pick a weight you would like to weigh. If you wanna weigh 100 pounds and you don't exercise, it's five calories per 100 pound weight per day. 500 calories a day, that's all you can have. I weigh 200 pounds. My limit, I don't exercise. I'm just as lazy as everybody else out there watching this video. My magic number is 1,000 calories a day. And that's what I stick at. I'm actually below that because I'm sitting down all day talking to people, so I really have a very sedentary lifestyle. So that's maintaining weight for you Correct. more than it is trying Correct. to lose. No, I'm not going to so lose weight at 1,000 calories. Yeah. Yes, I am. He's happy where he's at. All right, cool. So, but then the, you apply that same math if you need to, to be To anyone burning. that comes in here. Yeah, yes. okay, perfect. That's true. Great. If you're exercising, seven calories a day. Mm -hmm. So if you want to weigh uh, 200 pounds, like me, and I'm at 1,000 calories, if I wanted to exercise, I could put up to seven calories per pound per weight per day. That's 1,400. Why? I want to burn off 400 calories exercising at the gym on a treadmill, elliptical, things along those lines. And it still brings me back to my 1,000 calorie day net. Mm -hmm. So I'm still there. Just with exercise, I can eat a little bit more. So. so that's why it's good to, uh, while you're doing all of the weight loss program, to go ahead and get out there and, and work out too, because you can Eat earn a little more. Burn more, and you will yeah. accelerate your weight loss. Mm -hmm. Cool, great. Uh, the next question is, why no chocolate? Is it because of the sugar? Is it because of the calories? Okay, what? okay, okay. People think chocolate is sugar. It is not. Read the label. Creamy milk chocolate. The key word here is creamy. It comes from cream. It is not creamy milk chocolate. It is fat milk chocolate. A Hershey Kiss is 25 calories. If you have four Hershey Kisses a day, that's 100 calories a day, times 30 days, that's 3,000 calories, you just gained a pound from four cute little Hershey Kisses. So chocolate is fat. It's fat milk chocolate. That's why you can't have chocolate. And the same with dark chocolate? Yes, they're all the same. All the same. All right, yes. well, then don't ask for chocolate for Valentine's Day. The interesting thing is you can have, and I don't have much of a problem with this, Werther's Hard Candy, not the soft centers. The hard candy, it's got a lot of sugar in it, but less cream. There's no creamy milk chocolate. It's not soft, it's hard. And it has about a third of the calories of hard chocolate, but you get all the taste. So if women want chocolate, because I never get between a woman and her chocolate, yeah, you know, pull back thing. a nub. You know, <laughs> So, but where there's hard candy is okay. I don't have a problem with that. And that's their chocolate fix. And Jolly Ranchers are okay. Jolly Ranchers are okay too. Cool. All right, so the last question for the day is, does Finnerme lose its effectiveness over time? If so, what can be done? Okay, and the answer to that question is yes, and it's very unpredictable. I've had people on Fentramine and Fentramentrazine and other weight loss medicines, and some of them do very well for a majority of years. Other people, they struggle with it after about three to four or five months. And we have two options. One, we can go up on the dose, which I'd rather not. The second one is I tell them to take it for five days, get off it for two consecutive days. And that kind of sort of resets the tolerance to it. So when they start on it next week, they're good again. The problem is you gotta be careful on those two days and really watch what you eat and not to go overboard. Cool. All right, well, that is all the questions that we have for today. That's everything that was submitted. Oh, actually, no, I lied. I do have one other question. Um, this one was submitted by Dave Holloman. You're one and only, Dave Holloman. He I wanted hate, me to ask this, this question. I don't know why he keeps asking questions. <laughs> yeah, he was mad that we didn't answer it or ask it last week. So here's the question. Hot toddies. So that's whiskey, honey, tea, and sugar. Can it help relieve cold and flu symptoms? If true, if whiskey does help, can he skip the honey, tea, and sugar? <laughs> I think no, no, and no. Okay. <laughs> it does not help with cold symptoms. Might open the sinuses a little bit, yeah. but uh, no, I don't think it help them have the cold symptoms. And Dave, this is for you. If it helps, go for it, brother. <laughs> All right. Well, yes, that is everything we have. One interesting thing. I, okay. I found this out from my <laughs> wife. And uh, I've honestly, you folks probably can tell I'm a little bit under the weather right now. Yep. And so I've been on some antibiotics, taking some potent decongestants. I really had a sour stomach as my wife and I were driving through the great state of Arkansas. And uh, I told her, I said, you know, Doc, I'm sick of my stomach. I'm about ready to throw up. She goes, you need to get some McDonald's french fries. I'm like, what? She goes, oh, oh, when I was pregnant with all my children, when I had morning sickness, I had McDonald's french fries and a Coke. I said, well, I don't really know about to do the Coke. I swear to God, I pulled into McDonald's, I got a large french fry and it solved my sour stomach. Really? Yeah, I really felt good afterwards. 
And so today, twice today, some people are under the weather like, oh, I just can't take that stuff. I get sick to my stomach. I said, go eat some McDonald's french fries. So go McDonald's. Your french fries are good for yeah. something. Settle the stomachs down. Not great for the weight loss patients, but no, great if you have a, a yeah. upset stomach. <laughs> McDonald's french fries, they seem to work. They I'm a believer in it. They're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you all so much again for submitting all the questions. We had a lot of really awesome ones this week, and we hope to see you again next week with some new ones. So we hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe. See you next time. See you next week.